I started a series last Sunday, and the series, if you like, is I Will Honor God. I will honor God. Will you honor God? Because if you're going to mount up, you must honor God and honor His Word. And this morning, I'm sharing on a title from that series, Weightless Word, or a word that is weightless. Haina uzito. Somebody told me, and it is good to have someone who can tell you that last Sunday, I looked up at the clock and I discovered my time is up. So, the last two points, I threw them. And um, please uh, forgive me. It is when you see time and you don't want to keep people for long. But last time, we were looking on how we can honor God. We were looking at what honor means. And we said honor is to give weight to the word. Honor is to ascribe value to the word. Honor is to understand the consequence of the word. And you know, there are some of us that even say words within ourselves that we don't even mean them. So they are meaningless. They don't add up to anything. And we also read God's word sometimes with that mentality. It doesn't add anything to us. It doesn't mean anything to us. The word for this year is they that wait upon the Lord. Those people, as they wait upon the Lord, they are not told that they will go to Naivas and buy new strength, but they are told they, it is their business, they will renew their strength. They will work on areas that they are weak at. They will renew. They will work on it. They will have new strength so that they can mount up. And mounting up does not say somebody will mount throw us up. Mounting up simply means you and I will get ready with the new strength so that we can mount up. What a word for 2021. So today we want to look at uh, how we are not going to look on how to honor God. We are looking on what to honor. What do you honor? What do you honor? You see, Yesterday morning on the Zoom, I don't know whether it was myself, maybe the other G12 members, I don't know how their computers were working, but mine yesterday was very interesting. I would lift up my hand, but it would not reflect. It wait for a while. In other words, it was not collaborating with my word. The Kikuyus that are here, Inoro in particular, and Kameme, they have started bringing Indian movies, but they interpret them in our language. The mouth is saying something else, the Kikuyu person is saying something else, and you are also saying something else. Whatever, I don't know whether the Kikuyu man knows what is being said, but he says what he's saying and so on. It, there is a lot of the mouth and the word is not saying the same thing. And, and, it, and some of the movies, the old movies, used almost to behave the same. The, the, it, it, even here in church, sometimes you are speaking here and you speak and there is some length before what you are saying with your mouth and the words. Now, no, today is very good. Today, today... I, I thought today it would be like those, but it happens. Sometimes you are saying it, but it is not working at the same time. And I, I want to say that when we truly believe God, our lives and our lips, they begin to align themselves. It is not me saying one thing and doing another, but it is me saying what I say and I do it. I hear God, and what I hear God telling me, because I honor him, I do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that it is not me saying, you, musikunywe pombe, but for me, mimi ni nakunywa, lakini wewe usikunywe. 
You know, and Paul says, you can't do that. Because we want to see you. Then what you do is what we are going to do. And what God says is what he does. Honoring God. Do you want to honor God? Do you want to honor God? Because I want to honor God. I will honor God. I purpose to honor God. We'll be looking at Genesis chapter number 2. Because there we might learn a few truths that might help us on what I will honor God and what weightless word. How do we make God's word weightless? How do we make God's words of no value? How do we make word, word of God of no consequence whatsoever? In Genesis 2 verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Question. Did Adam and Eve believe in God? And the answer is, yes, they did. Question. Did they believe his word? I doubt it. Did they believe there could be consequence? I doubt it. But they believed in God. So, what is it that man did with the word of God? Genesis 3 verse 1 to 6 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now listen, if you, if you put that back again. You see, the devil is asking, has God said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? In other words, Mungu amesema mwezi kula kitu chotote hapa kwa hii shamba. Is that what God has said? The devil is seeking a conversation. And the woman, verse number two, said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the gardens, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Yani hata ukishika. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now remember, if you eat, you shall die. Eve is saying, if you touch, you shall die. But the devil says, no, you shall not die. The, for, God doth not, the, the, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He is bringing something that is a little bit different from what God had told uh, the woman and the man. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also unto her husband with her and he did it. Now, both Adam and Eve gave more weight to their own conclusions. What were their conclusions? In verse number six, they are concluding, first, this is good for food. Second, it is pleasant to our eyes. Uh, thirdly, it can be desired because it's going to make us wise. And then they did all what they did. In other words, Adam and Eve out of their own conclusions, they did, they did, they kind of did not follow the clear instruction of God, but out of their own conclusion, they honored themselves above the honor of God. 
They honored themselves above the honor of God. Going back to Genesis 2, verse 16 and 17, God is the one who is telling them. And God is so, he's a command, he's commanding them. That anything else here you can eat, go freely and enjoy it. But there is a tree here that please, don't do it, don't eat it. He's not talking about touching, he's saying don't eat it. Because the day you shall eat, you shall surely die. And the devil comes and he tells them, you shall not Die, die, because you shall not die, die, but you shall be wise unto yourself. So how do we view a weightless word? How do we view a weightless word? A weightless word, point number one, we view it as negotiable. Anytime you see God's word and you start the road of negotiating with the God or negotiating with the devil or negotiating among yourself know for sure you have started going the wrong way the word for 2021 is that we shall mount now if you start negotiating how you're going to mount with yourself or with your neighbors or with your pastor you are going the wrong way look at the word of god in the in the book of isaiah chapter 40 and it is saying they that wait upon the lord there is a condition. They will renew their strength. There is a condition. They will mount up. It is a condition that is following the other one. You wait, you renew, you mount up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So anytime you think you can negotiate. Ni oe mke wapiri, ni si oe mke wapiri. Ni mandiko gani nasema ni oe, ni mandiko gani nasema ni Ni, you know. Because the day you start that negotiation, somebody said, Ata mchayu anakuwa na bibiria. Kama ni mchayu wa kikuyu, anakuwa na bibiria ya kikuyu. Ivuku, lirea, itheru. Hako hapo hapo. Ukiingia unaona. Baka unasema, hata hui ni mtu wa mungu. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it is a command from God, no negotiation. But the word of God becomes weightless when we view it as negotiable. Genesis 3 verse 1b Has God said you shall not eat of every tree of a garden? Now, why are we negotiating? The first mistake that Eve did was to that command in Genesis chapter 2 to become negotiable in Genesis chapter 3. What has God said to you? It is not negotiable. If it is a command from God, take it. Soak it within yourself. Believe it. Start doing it. And I normally say this. Even this year there are people, men and women, who love God. But they will not mount up. Why? Because the word of God, they have started debating. Mtu, akipa, anazaka namlagani. It's not debatable. Answer na Strengthen yourself. Because if you do, the others are going to follow after you do what God is telling you. Wait, strengthen, then take off. God left no room with Adam and Eve for negotiation. There is no negotiation. What God has said, he will do it. I like the story in the New Testament of this uh, uh, father who the Lord, he, he, you know, he wants a miracle. He wa but he's telling Jesus, oh, please help my unbelief. Because many times we suffer from unbelief. We know what God is saying. But we have a lot of unbelief. Ask for the moon. You know, I still remember asking for the house that I'm living in. Asking for the moon. If God gives you that as a word, then ask. I know some of you, because of the age that you have gotten and you are almost retiring, if you have not retired, it's like you almost want to give up in life. 
Don't. Don't. Keep living. Desire God to finish with you all the promises that he has promised us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the first danger that you can have, my brother, looking from Genesis chapter 3, is when you make the word of God negotiable. You shall surely die. No negotiation. It is appointed for man once to die. No negotiation. The kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent will take it by force. No negoti negotiable. Number two. How do we view a weightless word? We view it as inconsequential. There are no consequences. Ah, hata hakuna kitu inatendekaga. You know, I normally tell people this. What you do today, you might not have the consequence. But because the Bible says the third and the fourth generation, your children will suffer. Where is Basasa? Watoto wako wataumia. Hizo mari unajuekea. Hawa atakula. Where unaweza kula, useme, ah, mungu, kweli, sinimepea na hongo na sija kufa. Wait, wait, where? Jirete tu. There will be consequence. So when you look and you view the word of God as if they are, it is in, inconsequential, there is no consequence in it. The serpent is telling Eve in Genesis 3, 4a, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. There is no consequence. Let me tell you, you hearing me wherever you are, one day the king of kings will come again and there will be judgment. You will be judged. The things that you do will be judged. And there is a heaven and a hell. If you do right, you go to heaven. If you do wrong, you go to hell. And there is nothing I can do. I cannot pray for you to change. Root. Ukikufa, ata musemo mzuri. Wacha hii musemo tumezoea, mweke mahali pema peponi. Pepo ya nani? Aende mahali alijitengenezea, alijitayarishia. Hapo ndipo anayendaga. But because we want to be religious. See, we want to be religious. Yeah? We bring our condolences as Deliverance Church and we pray that his soul will rest in eternal peace. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my saying will not change it. Kama ulikuwa mwizi, utahukumiwa. See, this young man who killed four family members at one point, I, I was able to follow the funeral. And uh, these are real kikuyus. No, these are real Kenyans. They don't know what killed their relatives and who did. Their son, who is in prison, is a good boy. Very good boy. If you, the word of, if you want to make the word of God weightless, then remove the consequence. Because the word of God is weighty because of the consequence. They that wait upon the Lord, the consequence of waiting upon the Lord faithfully is that they shall mount up. And I am saying this. If you are able to mount up, then if, if, if you ran here, you will not be weary. If you walk here, you cannot faint. Why? Because mounting up, you need a lot of strength. God detailed the consequence and there was no room for debate or argument. Point number three. How do we make the word of God of no weight? We view God as withholding something good from us. And, 
and the devil knows that. So he comes to, 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 to this woman and in verse number 5 and he says, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, when any time you think God is holding something good, then you make his word of no repute. When you think that God, we can hunger him, we can do something, then you can live the kind of life that you want to live. But friends, let me tell you, when God says it, he means it. The problem is that they began to believe God was withholding something good. And that's why we said in verse number, uh, 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 when they desired to, to eat it, verse number 6, when the woman saw, what did the woman do? The woman saw for herself, this is pleasing to my eyes. It's good for food. Oh, it is pleasant. I like it. Oh, it is a tree to be desired because it can make one wise. Now, that is where we go all wrong. God is not withholding anything good for you. They that wait upon the Lord, whether you are a pastor or a bishop, they that wait upon the Lord, whether you are a sweeper in the church compound or you are as an usher, it is they that wait upon the Lord. There is hakuna mkato. At my bishop, what I ingria mlangoi, washirika what I ingria kamlango aka. Wale my LCC members what I ingria mlango mkubwa. Ama matithas, wale matithas, matithas, matithas what I what I imbiwa nyimbo aki ingia. No, 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 no. If you want to mount up, it is they that wait upon the Lord. Finish. You wait upon God, I wait upon God, then I will strengthen myself, then I will mount up. That's why I'm saying a lot of us will not, because you'll be saying apana, apana, yi najua. You, you, you see it is like this. I know I have said this in this church, that I have never, and Gashuru is here, I have never asked for my salary. Ever. I've never asked for it. I know many people don't believe me. They don't believe me. Because I live like I don't. Or like I do. Like everything here is mine. <laughs> one time I, I went to, to, a, to a funeral. Mashakaya somewhere. And one lady looked at me right in the eye. And she told me this. Pastor. I said. Why? Because. Si alis dia na bebaga sadaka. Ah, mna friegi san. You know, I also tithe, do I? And I tithe sometimes, and I I get a shocker because I was again me pata milioni kumi. Kwa hivyo lazima ni toa milioni. Sasa unaona ita kutisha sana unatoa mia tatu mia ine hivi. But I'm trying to tell you, it is they that wait upon God. Hakuna siri imewekawa bishop kemani alafu wewe unanyimwa. Hapana. It is the minute you think that way then whatever I tell you you don't believe me. And I'm telling you I also believe God. Actually I'm also a hustler. Watch ya. Leave, leave alone the, the weary barrow hustlers. I'm also a hustler in the kingdom. I have to hustle no more academic you know, so that I can enter because I want to go to heaven. Somebody said in heaven there will be three surprises. One is when you don't see the bishop that you thought would be there. Be a surprise. The second surprise is to see that one that you thought cannot make it. It will be a surprise. And the third surprise is to find yourself in with all your shortcomings. Sin is a surprise. We are all hustlers. I see we are hustlers. What are you? <laughs> you know, you know, in this country when you say something, people say, ah, at a bishop where to do are you up and I'm talking about hustling in the things of the kingdom. <laughs> Number four. We can make the word of God of no weight, of no repute, of no value. 
if you, if you e review it as one of the two paths and reason that our path may ultimately be better than God's. Yani, when you view God's word as there are two ways you can reason it. And one, even my path could be better than God's path. And that's why Genesis 3 verse 6, and when the woman saw, in other words, what God had said in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, the woman here turns around and saw. And she thinks, because I'm also going to be wise, I'm going to take this, I don't have to follow God, I will follow my way. And the woman saw it was good for food, and the woman saw it was pleasant for the eye, and the woman saw that the tree was to be desired because it was going to make you wise. The problem, plainly, if I can state the problem, our biggest problem is unbelief. We hear it, we don't believe it, and we do, if we believe it, we doubt whether it is going to happen in our time, therefore, tunachanganyikia pale. It is actually unbelief. They that wait upon the Lord, ay, nimegoja buwana, sinimemgoja, tena nimegoja tena, amekaa sana, you know? I know I would, go, I would quote people, I would quote even Abraham and so on, and the mistake they fell in as they were waiting. Because waiting sometimes it can be too long. But there is a statement that, that amazed me. Really. It was shared somewhere we were uh, this week, and it was shared by Bishop Masindi. Some of you that were following it life, maybe you could remember this statement. Abraham, anafika mahali ya naangalia mke wake. Anaona huyu mke wake, anaweza fanya awawe. Kwa hivyo anaambia Abimelech, Uyu ni my sister yule mdogo. This is happening after in Genesis 18 an angel has come to tell Sarah that God will visit her. And the Bible says because she was in the tent, she was not seeing what was happening. She was only hearing. She had the conversation. Now JB dramatized it very well because JB said she looked at the mirror inside because she was 75. Thank God there is no lady here who is 75. When you get there, this might be true with you. She looked at herself in the mirror and the chest was flat. So she's asking herself, Mimi, ata mtoto watanyonya nini? Then, diyo sasa wanaenda na Abraham. Na Abraham, anaona. In other words, when God spoke, and this is the revelation I got, this is not what JB said, but this is revelation I got. When God speaks, he does not only speak, he also brings the ability to do the things that he has said. Because, in the following chapter, she becomes young and Abimelech can go for her. Yani kama ameonekana ni murembo kuliko ole wegine, ilitendeka nini? Na amejiangalia kwa kio ye ni flat. Na sasa, Abraham anasema, na doko yewe my wife, yewe my sister. So the miracle is, and I want to speak to you, if you can hear God and believe him, don't doubt him. If he says it, it's going to happen, he will change you. Sarah was changed. Abimelech wanted Sarah for wife. No geiki ya mutumi wa miaka 75. Nani? Apa. But you know what? When God says it, he will do it. Iza karazima angiapata maziwa. And there are some of you that God is going to renew your strength. I'm telling you. 
the word that we have for this year God will renew your strength but you have to wait upon him waiting si mchezo umgoje huyo bwana ili akujaze sana alijazwa akaonekana kamhusiana kadogo lakini abimelek usiku aliambiwa if you touch her you are dead man <laughs> but he told me the sister no no if you touch her ule ni nabii akuombee utapata baraka the problem plainly stated is unbelief in a sense we could say that sin is always bathed in unbelief let's not have doubt about the word that we have for this year finally we make the word of god weightless number 5 we reap the consequence of placing greater weight on our own reasoning than we do on the word of god listen to people arguing about what is going to happen there are so many prophecies and prophecies is that there is kikuja actually i had one that said 2030 hakutakuwa na dunia oh i went to a funeral on friday they said the mark is coming right now what we have ni kionjo tu that was somebody saying all the men with the tattoos hiyo umeekwa ikiwa ya kugoja goja na wadada muko na tattoo whatever you have tattooed yourself ni kugoja lazima itawekwa mkono wa kulia ama kwa uso prophecies are there we reap the consequence of placing greater weight on our own reasoning than we do on the word of god the bible still says no one who knows the time even jesus said he does not know the time so when someone gives me a time what do i do i cancel him because jesus can come today he can come in the evening he can make sure that we don't we don't see uh, whatever politics that are going on he can make sure that we do that but as long as we are alive all what he tells us is occupy until i come so your business is to occupy and as you occupy wait upon the lord genesis 3 verse 7 and the eyes of them both were opened so the devil was not lying and they knew they were naked something that they had not known so they became wise and they showed fig trees together and made themselves aprons without even preaching more whatever they were making for, for themselves in a kauka in a nyauka until god had to kill an animal for them because of the love that he had for them the problem results in pain brought by our own refusal to trust him When we give no weight to the word of God we are in in essence glorifying ourselves and robbing God of the glory that belongs to him first Romans chapter 1 verse 21 because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened Not is what we do with the truth when we disregard God's word Romans 1 verse 25a who changed the truth of God into a lie This means that they traded truth for their own thinking their own reasoning they thought they had greater weight than God's and that must change James chapter 1 verse 22 says but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves how do we view a weighty word we view a weighty word by saying amen to it 
Let the wicked forsake his ways and unrighteous man his thought. We say amen. Let him return unto the Lord. Amen. And you will have mercy upon him. Amen. And our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. We say amen. Let it be so. When the word of God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, we say amen. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. We say amen. We put weight into the word of God. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways. Amen. They are higher than our ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Do you want to honor God? Do you want to honor God? If you want to honor God, honor his word. Put value into it. Put weight into it. Our heavenly father, the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in this year of mounting up, Oh, what you're calling us to do, Heavenly Father, is to honor your word. And to honor you is to honor your word. And to honor your word is to believe your word. And to believe your word is to trust your word. Lord God, if there is any unbelief among us, help our unbelief. Change our unbelief to believing you. Father, I pray that anyone that has heard me speak from wherever they are, that they will have a week of honoring God's word. They will have a week not negotiating with the word of God, not thinking that God is withholding something right, not, not knowing the consequence of the things that we do. But we are going to have a week that we are going to put value into the word of God. When the word of God says something, we'll just say, hey.